Desperate Japanese engineers turned to bath salts to help trace a leak from the Daiichi nuclear plant. This is the pit engineers thought had been seeping radioactive water into the sea. Earlier attempts to seal a crack in the pit at reactor number two with a mix of sawdust, newspaper, polymers and cement failed. We now put in as a tracer about 13 kilos of milky white bath salts on the seawater exhaust pipe from the vertical trench. Until it is stopped, highly radioactive water continues to flow into the sea. Japanese cabinet secretary said that it could become a bigger problem. If this situation continues for a long time, the issue of accumulated radiation contamination will increase. Even if the sea does disperse the radiation, it will become a bigger problem. So we need to stop this from spreading out to sea as quickly as possible. The Japanese government said three of the six Fukushima reactors were now stable, but at least four will eventually be scrapped. Marie Claire Fennessy, Reuters. Japan's government says it will withheld computer projections indicating high levels of radioactivity in areas more than 30 kilometers from the troubled Fukushima Daiichi power plant due to inaccurate data. An institute commissioned by the government made the estimates using a computer system called Speedy on March 16th after explosions at the plant. The system estimated that people who remained outdoors for 24 hours in Itate village, some 40 kilometers from the plant, would be exposed to radiation exceeding 100 millisieverts. The projections were based on the assumption that radioactive substances had been released for 24 hours on March 15th. The government's Nuclear Safety Commission says it did not release the projections because the locations or amount of radioactive leakage was not specified at the time. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has begun discharging contaminated water into the ocean. The radio radiation level of the released water is said to be very low. Tokyo Electric Power Company says it needs to free up space to store water with much higher levels of radiation. In order to securely store extremely high radioactive waste based on the Nuclear Reactor Regulation Law Article 61, Section 1, we have decided to discharge into the sea 10,000 tons of low radioactive water in the central treatment facility, as well as 1,500 tons of low radioactive groundwater stored in the subdrain pits of number 5 and number 6 reactors as soon as we are ready. Contaminated water being discharged from two sources. One is a waste processing facility holding 10,000 tons of water. The other is a pit underneath the number five and number six reactors that contains 1,500 tons of contaminated run runoff. TEPCO stresses that contamination of seawater will be very low. It says the amount of radiation a grown-up will receive in a year by eating fish and seaweed is calculated to be 0 0.6 millisieverts. Now this is lower than the government's 1 millisieverts safety standard. We have decided that discharging the contaminated water into sea poses no major health hazard and that it is unavoidable in order to avoid bigger risks. Japan's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says a full-scale recovery of cooling systems at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is needed to stem the leakage of radioactive substances. But it says that work will take several months. Highly radioactive water was found inside turbine buildings and also in tunnels under the plant. The radioactive water is flowing directly into the sea. A senior official of the agency, Hideiko Nishiyama, made the comments at a news conference on Sunday. Mother. It's important to cool the reactors, stabilize them, and avoid damaging the fuel rods again. Then we should do three things. The first thing is to remove the contaminated water from the turbine building. The second thing is to reduce levels of radioactive substances and block them. 
Thirdly, and finally, we should establish a long-term mechanism to cool the reactors. The agency said it will take several months to remove the contaminated water in the turbine buildings and to take measures to protect workers from radiation. At a news conference on Sunday, the Independent Nuclear Safety Commission also pointed out that it will take months to stem the leakage and restore cooling systems. Restoring cooling systems will take several months because debris and high radiation levels will hamper work. Radiation levels continue to drop or remain flat on Monday morning in many locations around the disabled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. In Fukushima City, about 65 kilometers northwest of the plant, 2.51 microsieverts per hour of radiation was detected. The reading in Kodiyama City, also in Fukushima Prefecture, stood at 2.21. Both figures are higher than the normal levels of 0.04 to 0.06 microsieverts per hour, but lower than Sunday's figures. The reading stood at 0.49 microsieverts per hour in Kita Ibaraki City and 0.07 microsieverts per hour in Sendai City. Slightly higher than usual levels of radiation were also observed in other locations, including Tokyo's Shinjuku Ward and its surrounding areas. But officials say these levels of radiation do not pose health risks. Japan's health ministry has decided to maintain its current radiation limits for food despite calls by farmers to relax them. The ministry set tentative maximum levels for radiation in food several days after the earthquake and tsunami crippled the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. It based them on what the Nuclear Safety Commission says is the maximum level of radiation a person can safely be exposed to in one year. A health ministry council decided on Monday that the commission's standards are a reasonable basis for setting food safety levels. The government banned shipments of vegetables and milk from Fukushima and three other prefectures after radiation exceeding the limits was found in them. The head of the Health Ministry Council says it's vital to review the monitoring and testing system so as to give the public accurate information that's easy to understand. The Japanese Science and Technology Ministry says the cumulative radiation dose in Namie town topped 10 millisieverts in the 11-day period to Sunday. Namiya is a little more than 30 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. 10 millisieverts is the limit set by the government before ordering the residents to stay indoors. The Nuclear Safety Commission says the limit has only been exceeded in a small area. It maintains its zone where residents should seek shelter inside does not need to be expanded. The Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology put up radiation dosimeters that can take continuous measurements and cumulative totals at 13 locations outside the 30 kilometer zone. Currently, the indoor shelter zone is between 20 and 30 kilometers from the plant, but high radiation has been observed in several places outside the zone. In one location in Namie, a little over 30 kilometers northwest of the plant, the 11-day cumulative dose until yesterday reached 10.3 millisieverts for someone who stayed outside for that period. This is 10 times the permitted dose for ordinary people other than natural and medical radiation, but it does not pose an immediate health hazard. But the government has set 10 millisieverts as the target for ordering residents to shelter indoors, and the measurement at this location exceeded it. At this measurement point, high radiation had been observed before the 11-day period. The state's Nuclear Safety Commission says the excessive level of radiation is only measured in a limited area, so it is not going to change the indoor shelter zone for now. Professor Masaharu Hoshi of Hiroshima University's Research Institute for Radiation Biology and Medicine says it's problematic that the state is not given an explanation to residents when the dose exceeds the state's target figure. He says the target figure is one criteria, so the government must decide what to do according to specific situations, but it must fulfill its responsibility to give an adequate explanation to residents. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Edano says the government will wait for the results of the review of the evacuation zone and the indoor shelter zone before acting upon today's findings. Edano says various data are coming in and the government is having them examined from a scientific 
and professional viewpoint. He says some kind of decision may be made based on the outcome.